Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and today I'm gonna make Donkey Kong. Now as is always the case, except in the few cases where it's not the case, I like to make the armature first since it's essentially the bones of the model and bones generally belong on the inside. I'm also envisioning Donald Kong leaping off some sort of platform, so I want to make sure that his bones are particularly strong since his entire weight will be supported on a single wire. To that end, I'm gonna make his bones out of the thickest gauged wire I have. His upper body though won't need to be nearly as strong, so I can make his arms out of some thinner wire before beginning to bulk up the body with a layer of aluminium foil. Now I get a lot of folk asking me why I say aluminium instead of aluminium when my accent is clearly Canadian, and the answer is simple. I live in the UK and they speak funny here, and I've sort of adopted their oddities. More importantly though, each video tends to have a hundred or so comments telling me I say it wrong, and as far as YouTube is concerned, any and all comments are a sign of engagement and they like that. So if you think I'm really just milking rage comments, well, absolutely. Otherwise my bulking is finished, but before I get to adding skin, I need to make a barrel. I wasn't sure what the best way to make a barrel would be, and I originally started by making some clay staves and gluing them onto a tube, but as it turns out, there's a decent amount of planning that goes into the shape of a stave so that you get a barrel by the end. Planning isn't really something we do here, so instead I've made a little aluminium ball, attached a couple woody coins to the tips, then wrapped it in a layer of woody brown clay. I'll then smooth and shape my woody brown textureless tube until it resembles a woody brown textureless barrel before wrapping it in a layer of cling film and cutting some larger vertical grooves which will be the aforementioned staves. I can then remove the cling film so as I can add the woody texture between the cuts before wrapping a long wormy dealie around the top of the barrel which will be the hoop that holds it all in place. I can then add the rest of my hoops and make sure they're sort of flat and uniform and get to making the all important red DK sign. I've sized and printed out the signage on a bit of paper which I can then use as a template to cut the appropriate shape out of a sheet of red clay. I can then peel this off the mat and stick it onto my barrel before sticking a couple lengths of wire into the top and bottom which will then allow me to attach my barrel to the top of my skinless Donkey Kong armature. I want Ronald McConnell to be holding the barrel above his head as if he's about to smash it onto his opponent and making it first means I can more easily add the hands later. Otherwise with the barrel in place I can start to slap on the layer of ape flesh colored clay. Most of not King Kong's body is covered in fur though, so I really only need to add skin to his chest and belly before I can get started making his hands. Now like I said, the barrel makes it pretty easy to add the hands, since all I need to do is add a big blob for the meaty parts of the palm, then stick a handful of finger sausages in place so that it looks like DK squeezing the barrel from both sides. A quick poke with the sharp end of a sculpting tool will give his fingers some gnarly fingernails and I can repeat the process on the other side. With the hands finished, I'll finish bulking up his bulky upper body by adding some big muscly pecs and an oversized ape belly before repeating the hand making process with his leg hands. These basically get the exact same process, except they haven't got a barrel to hold, so instead the right leg hand will be open palmed while the left leg hand will be pushing off a wall or a flat surface or something. I don't know, I haven't figured it out yet. Otherwise at this point I'll bake the body to make sure I don't mess up the fleshy fingery bits and then I can start to build up the brown furry bits starting by bulking out the arms and legs with some more wrinkled aluminium to keep the weight to a minimum. This then gets wrapped in a copious layer of brown furry Donkey Kong clay until I've got the overall shape I'm after. Sometimes in the clay adding stage I start to realize that I've gone completely off with proportions and then I struggle to bring it all back in line, but with a big furry oddly proportioned Nintendo ape it's easy enough just to slap blobs of clay in place until it's looking not just good but good enough. Of course if I'm going to be making a great big leaping Kong then I have to pay homage to the absolute cakes that Kong carries around, or perhaps more accurately the cakes that carry Kong around. Otherwise with his ample dessert in place I can finish bulking out the body before getting to work making his head. 
I'll start out with a Hershey's Kisses shaped ball of foil which I can then stick a big blob of fleshly colored clay onto the front of. I'll then carve out the mouth and start to shape his eyebrows. Now I had originally thought he'd be doing sort of an angry grimace kind of expression but decided that despite starting as a villain Donkey Kong's undergone some pretty impressive character growth and he's developed into sort of a Hulk like character who's a bit of an overly strong hot head with a heart of gold. So while I started out by giving him an angry looking snarl more reminiscent of his days throwing barrels at a scaffolding climbing Mario, once I got his eyes in place and added a couple big flared nostrils, I figured he'd be better served with a great big cheeky monkey grin. So once I gave him a quick joker surgery, I can fill his mouth with a blob of translucent clay into which I can carve a set of great big gorilla teeth. I've never made Donkey Kong before so it took me a while to figure out the shape of his head but once I got the teeth in place and built up his cheeks a little bit I was content enough to bake it all to save my progress so I could get on to adding the brown fur around the rest of his head. I've left a little wire sticking out the bottom of my Kong noggin so I can stick it into a little hole I drilled in his chest. Then I can add a big burly lump of neck to fill in the gap before finally adding some little ears on the side and getting to work on the tedious, time consuming task of adding fur. I've made a fair number of furry creatures in my short YouTube career and I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do it. It's one of those tasks that's incredibly time consuming and doesn't make for great content since it's really just poking and prodding ad nauseum. I think the static grass fur is a great option but I'm pretty sure it's giving me lung cancer so I like to keep its use to a minimum. In the meantime I guess this will have to do. After all I suppose 90% of what I do is poking and prodding clay so who am I to say what's good content. Eventually I've got a fully furred Kong and to help give his fur a bit of a fluffier scruffier appearance I'll stick some teeny tiny strategically placed lumps in some key fur locations. Finally before I forget I'll wrap a long thin red worm of clay around his neck and tie it into a knot at the bottom before snipping off the knot and getting to work making the actual tie itself. I'll rest the red tie on a length of wire that I can use to give the clay a bit of movement then I'll add the knot back onto the tip and stick it in place on Kong's chest. I'll remove the wire later so it's not visible but during the final bake it'll help keep the clay in place as it cures. Otherwise that's the sculpting finished and it's time to add a bit more color. Kong's got a pretty flat brown coat so to give that coat some luster I'll repaint the brown with a thick brown wash which should settle in all the fur detail and really make it pop. And once that's had time to dry I can give it a quick dry brushing with a little lighter brown to add some highlights to the tips before removing the tie so I can start to add a bit of variation to his fleshy chest and cheeks and hands. I'll give the red barrel sign a nice red barrel sign red then rather messily retrace the outline of the letters in a yellow. Then I will give the staves a nice woody brown wash followed by a dark steel coat on the hoops. Kong's eyes get a couple little brown pupils and I'll paint his teeth with a very thin white to give them some depth then I can give the eyes a glossy UV resin top coat before adding the DK logo to the tip of his tie and returning it to his chest. And with that Donkey Kong is done so it's time to make our reformed villains villain. King K. Rule is birthed into the world in a very similar manner to Donkey Kong in that he starts with a pair of extra thick leg bones attached to a double wound aluminium spine that then gets wrapped in an ever increasing pile of foil. Top that all off with some teeny tiny wiry arms and we're all set to start building up the clay. The cruel royal crocodile is a pretty beefy boy with an impressive physique that needs proper attention and it's also worth noting that much like Donkey Kong, King K. Rule's creators also made sure to give him some pretty beefy ham chops as well and I'm nothing if not committed to preserving the original design so he's gonna get some big old butt cheeks as well. He's also damn near spherical so I want to make sure he's got a nice girthy gut too. I'll then take a quick minute to smooth everything out before wrapping the king's body in cling film so I can start to add the full body scaly texture. 
Now in hindsight, I'm not so psyched about how the scales turned out and the next time I make an anthropomorphic crocodilian sovereign, I'll take a bit more time to make the scales a bit more pronounced. In my defense though, I just spent an afternoon adding a fully furry body to Donkey Kong and I'm only just now realizing that what I thought would be a nice quick project is quickly running away from me. A little rough work with the sculpting tool will help add a bit of texture to the scales and I think once the rest of the body is built and it's got some paint on it, it'll look pretty good. We're very deep into the trust the process stage of the sculpture at this point, so just bear with me. The spindly little wire arms aren't sufficiently beefy for the scaly Pirate King, so same as I did with DK, I'll beef them up a bit with aluminium foil before adding a top layer of clay and getting the shape a bit more shapely. Obviously the only pose for this prehistoric king is the standard crazy eye pointing pose so I've bent the arms into the necessary position and once I've got it all covered in clay I can go back to the plastic wrap to add the scales to any of the additional clay. I've left the belly intentionally scale free since instead of scales King Cruel's rocking a 24 karat paunch and a bra worth its weight in gold. Once I've got the clay in place and blended together I'll make sure to make it nice and smooth before poking a big divot in the bottom of the belly so I can turn this innie into an outie then get to work smoothing out the sections of his wrists where his golden bracelets will go. Then I can start to make his hands by adding a set of three fingers and a thumb before poking little divots into each of the tips so I can jam some finger pokers in place. I'll then add some scaly texture to the top of the hands before bending the fingers into that final the beaches that away pose. A couple wormy dealies wrapped around the wrist will delineate my golden cuffs and using a bit of cling film to prevent fingerprints I can push his right arm into place on his hip in that final sassy position. His head stirs out as an oblong egg which gets squished in place between his shoulders and a big mouth gets cut down the center and then the stuffing gets pulled out. I'll then start to build up the shape of the snout, thicken up and reshape the cheeks and fatten up the neck. A couple blobs of clay pressed into place on top of his head will be the, well the top of his head I guess, and once it's been smoothed and blended into the existing clay I can poke a couple of eye sockets which then get filled with a pair of slightly misshapen eyeballs. I'll then exaggerate his eyebrows by adding a couple layers of little wormy dealies around the top until I've got one slightly crazy eye and one incredibly crazy eye and then I can finish his face off by adding lots of little scales all over the surface. I'll jam a tongue down his gullet, poke a couple sniffing holes into the tip of his snout and then I can jam some pre-baked teeth into his gums. Finally his feet can get pressed into place on the exposed wire of the nubs on his legs and I can start to shape out a set of three equally sized stabby toes devoid of stabbers till I stab some divots in place and stab some toe stabbers into them. Then it's just a case of adding some more scaly texture on top and that's the majority of my Cruel King Croc finished. Obviously he still needs a cape and a crown, but before I get to that I want to give him a fresh coat of paint. I'll start by painting the entirety of the king with an appropriately green green base coat, trying to keep his chest and belly mostly clear since I want to paint that with a yellow base coat. That should then make it a little easier to add the golden top coat, uh, on top. I'll touch up the edges of the golden sections with a brush, making sure to blend it in and hide any of the brush strokes, then I can paint the inside of his mouth pink and his tongue darker pink before tickling the tips of his scales with a very heavy dry brush of barf green green. The dark will stay between the scales and it should help to give them a bit more definition. Finally I'll paint all the white parts with white, then come back and dust the tips of the teeth and claws with a dirty bone white to give some color variation. Finally I can give the eyes some little black dots for pupils and give the left eye some of that crazy red eye vein. Now with the body mostly painted I can set him aside and make his cape. To make the cape I'll start with a big ball of red clay that I can smoosh flat then put through the pasta machine a couple of times until I've got a nice uniformly flat sheet of clay. To give the clay a bit of a clothy texture, I'll transfer the texture of this cloth onto the clay with a roller, then I can lay it on a plastic sheet and cut it to size. 
By cutting it on the sheet, I can easily remove it when I'm done without worrying about it sticking to my mat. For now though, once I've got the shape figured out, I'll scuff up the bottom of the cape with a stiff nylon brush, reapply the texture with the fabric, then I can start to cut out rips and tears along the edge. Since it'll be hard to add the design to the underside of the cape once it's been baked in place, I'll paint it now while the clay is still soft. This works perfectly fine and will actually help the paint adhere to the clay a bit better since they'll both get baked in the oven at the same time. I think. I mean, it might not. I'm actually just making this up as I go. Once the paint's dry to the touch, I can peel my cape off the plastic and press it into place on Jaw Rule's back. Using some bits of wire, I can reposition the cape so it's a bit more flowy while it bakes and some strategic pinching and pressing will add lots of natural wrinkles to the cape. Finally, I'll add some chunky pre-textured worms of clay around the neck, which will be the collar of the cape and then can be easily blended into the existing sections. Now, I did add a blue crystal off camera when I realized I'd forgotten it, but otherwise the only thing left to do is turn this commoner K rule into a king K rule by adding a tiny golden crown. With that, I've now got my hero and my villain, but I need something for them to stand on. Because of the size of these not so tiny nerdy things, I considered making them freestanding without a base, except I kind of painted myself into a corner with Donkey Kong since he's already jumping and he needs a platform to launch off of. First I'll cut down my oversized foam sheet to an adequately sized foam sheet, then using some foam safe super glue I'll attach a riser on the right side so I give Donkey Kong a launching pad that will be able to support his weight. To protect and prime the foam, a mix of Mod Podge and black paint should give me a nice surface to attach my planks to. The planks themselves I'll make using some very thin XPS foam that I'll first cut to size so it's slightly larger than the width of my base. Now I've also made a couple sheets to fit the vertical of the Kong shelf as well as on top. To make the foam look a little bit more woody, I'll score the surface haphazardly using a dull pencil followed by a sharp brush to give a nice woody texture before cutting it down into individual boards. I can then soften up the edges of the board so they look a little bit more worn than using lots and lots of PVA glue I can start to attach the boards to the base not trying too hard to make sure they line up properly. I also cut the base in half to make it a little easier to display on my turntable and I cut some shorter boards to fit on both the vertical part and the top of the shelf. I don't want Donkey's armature to be visible at all so I'm gonna try and hide it under the floorboards but to make sure they stay flat I need to cut out a shallow groove for the wire to fall into. With the wire now sitting flush with the shelf, I can apply glue on top of the shelf but leave a few planks around the wire free floating so I can remove them as necessary. To keep the planks together, I'll use a little tape to remove them so that I can glue them together later. In the meantime, I'll tape off the black base so I can prime all my planks with a grey base coat. Once the primer's dried, I'll give all the planks an initial once over with a heavy brown wash to get my brown base coat in place before working my way through a series of lighter dry brushes for highlighting. I'll then give it one final coat of a very, very thin umber wash to tie it all together. Finally, for that added touch of artistic flair, I'll flick the surface with the leftover wash. This doesn't actually do anything since it spreads out anyways, but it's fun and it makes me feel like I know what I'm doing. I'll then remove the painter's tape, pop the planks off the little hidden hole, insert Kong and replace the boards. Then King K. Rule gets dropped onto his own platform and that's us done and on to the glamour shots.
As always, a huge thank you to the fine patrons of Patreon who continue to patronize me in the best way possible. And of course, a big shout out to my newest patrons, Cecilia and Valerie, Grady Constant, Orlean Jorgensen, Joanna, Yes Bucket, Alexander Marshall, Mason Jardine, Zachary Martire, Sarah, Casa de Bateman, Nana Line, Caden Foote, Dan Enderly, Robert Fleck, Sprocket66, and Janaya Kumar. You are the DK branded barrel with which I accost my enemies. As always, don't forget to press down Y, down, down Y to enter the secret level whenever you see Cranky Kong. Otherwise, we'll um, see you next time. Cheers.